Have you ever dreamed of owning a bed and breakfast or a small inn and opening the doors to the world, but are not sure where to start? Here is your buying a bed and breakfast checklist. Welcome to another edition of Hospitality Property School. I am your instructor, Jerry McPherson. If you haven't subscribed yet, do it now and make sure to hit the little bell so you'll be informed when I upload a new video. You won't want to miss anything I designed especially for you. How to find the right location for buying a bed and breakfast is a question I'm often asked. Choosing the right property can make a huge difference on whether you're going to succeed or not. So it's extremely important when you are in the initial planning stages to seriously consider where you're going to invest. For this reason, I have put together a buying a bed and breakfast checklist to follow. This checklist has also been used for when looking at other types of vacation rentals to purchase. Something I have seen over and over again is aspiring bed and breakfast owners look at their current property or find one and are crazy about it. They invest a fortune on renovations and interior design and then list it on OTAs wishing for the best. For many, they might have a little initial success, but more often than not, the success is fleeting. I don't want to discourage you, so before you buy, I want to give you a chance to succeed. Continue reading, and I will share the buying a bed and breakfast checklist, right after a word from our sponsor. Question for hotel, resort, inn, bed and breakfast, etc. owners and managers. What if knowing how to open your hospitality property doors post COVID-19 and giving your guests such a safe and amazing experience that they will not only want to return, but will rave to their friends, family and colleagues about how great your place is, was as easy as cooking. Sound weird? Let me explain. Reopening your hospitality property using the post-COVID-19 action plan. No guessing, no testing, no wasted time. Just follow the proven recipe and make your property cook. Click the link for more information and happy cooking. Before the break, I said I would share the buying a bed and breakfast checklist. Don't be in a rush to find the right location. If you're dealing with a real estate agent, find one that's willing to take the time to find you the best deal. If you feel you're being pressured by them, my first instinct is to always walk away. Just because a particular town or area has a lot of tourists, it's not always the basis for success. Because if you go down the road, you'll find that there will be competition with everybody else, mostly on price, and you'll find it very hard to differentiate yourself and charge more. Research the area you're considering to open and ask yourself these questions. What are at least five reasons people visit the area? What are the main attractions in the area? Which of those attractions would you enjoy the most and why? Sleep around. Visit other hospitality properties in the area you're considering to open. Talk with the owners and if they'll tell you, find out their pros and cons. Study the surroundings. I once chatted with a gentleman who wanted to buy a hospitality property sitting on a cliff overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. The building was in great shape, beautiful view, and loyal clientele, and the current owner was willing to sell at a very low price. He wanted to know my opinion, so I asked him what the rate of the cliff erosion was. He had no idea and admitted he never considered it. Upon further checking, we found that the cliff was eroding at an average of 3 meters a year, and at that rate, he would have to move his property within 10 years. This was a cost he had not considered and passed on the deal. Examples of how elements could affect your site? Is the area prone to flooding? Where do the winds come from? Is there industry in the area? Is there heavy traffic or livestock farms nearby? You have to be aware of the noise and potential smell. Before committing to a site, 
visit it on several different days and times so you'll understand what your guests will experience. Choose the business model. You can purchase a property outright, rent the property from the permanent owner, or negotiate a rent-to-purchase agreement. Obtain necessary permits and licenses. You need to obtain the appropriate general business license and other permits, such as food service certification. These will vary based on your location. Make sure your design fits. Building an independent inn or bed and breakfast in an industrial zone is probably not the best way to attract your ideal guests. You have to know, is there an infrastructure in place? Do the roads make your property easily accessible? Is public transportation usable? Are there things for your guests to do, restaurants or attractions? Details like this are extremely important. Are these making sense so far? Let me know by leaving a comment. Before you do any building or renovating, you have to decide who is your target market? Are they going to be vacationers or business travelers? Young or old? Wealthy or budget travelers? You should have a target market in mind and not try to be everything to everyone. Now that you know your target market, you're going to have to determine their needs and this can be done by researching other properties targeting your market, trends, and technology. When designing your inn or bed and breakfast, it will be well worth your while to hire an architect or designer who understands the hospitality industry. Interview them away from your site, their office, and ask to see some of the work they have done. When you feel comfortable with your choice, then bring them to your site. Set your prices. Based on market conditions, type of room, size and type of bed, views from the room, shared or private bath, service and amenities offered. Set your expectations. Potential bed and breakfast owners should have a clear understanding of the finances involved. For example, the fewer the rooms, the less income that will be generated, making it more difficult to be a primary source of income. Let me dive a little further into this example. If your B&B has four rooms at $80 per night and the rooms are filled every day of the year, you will gross $116,800 annually. However, the chances of every room being booked every night is next to impossible. Also, the gross amount is not profit you'll have to factor in all your expenses and taxes. You'll also have to determine what will you be offering them and why would they choose you. Use the appropriate consultants as necessary. For example, interior designer, structural designer, landscapers, electrical, etc. Benefit from their experience, but remember, you're in charge. Overseeing this kind of development can be very time-consuming, and if you're unable to do it yourself, hire somebody you trust to manage the project. Create a budget and stick to it. Walk and visualize everything. You want to draw out every aspect of your property, and an even better option would have a three-dimensional model built. You want to understand how all aspects of your property will work together before the first nail is hammered or concrete is poured. I had mentioned that you need to have a budget and stick to it, but it's also important to be flexible when necessary. Set a schedule and an end date. Make sure everyone involved agrees to and signs to the schedule and the completion dates. Keeping in mind that outside factors could influence this time frame. For example, weather, holidays, legal requirements, etc. Frequently visit the site to make sure there are no surprises. As each operation area is finished, do a walk around, looking at it as your guests would. Hire great staff. Bed and breakfast owners can suffer from burnout when they are faced with the daily challenges of cooking, cleaning, gardening, maintenance, marketing, hospitality, ordering, and accounting. If you choose to hire employees to take on one or more of these functions, you want to make sure that your staff, just like you, 
can thrive interacting with the ever-changing customer base. Decorate to attract your target market. If your bed and breakfast is near the ocean, a nautical theme is what your guests will be looking for. If you're appealing to guests looking for a tranquil or rural experience, then a country cottage should be your theme. Become an authority on your area or a particular aspect of your area. By doing this, you can develop a following of guests who will only think of you when they think about visiting your area. When the building renovations are almost complete, you might be thinking, I can hardly wait to open my doors and invite the world in. Everything's almost done. Well, not so fast. Your property might almost be ready, but now you need an organizational strategy in place. But this is for another day. If you're a member of the Hospitality Property School group, as a bonus, you will get a more detailed checklist of specifics you need to consider when buying a bed and breakfast. In conclusion, before I finish, I would like to give you one more tidbit of information. If the property you're considering purchasing already has a failed history as a vacation rental, there might be a reason. A bad reputation can be very difficult to shake off. As long as you have a clear-cut idea of what you are buying and where you plan to take the business in the future, you should be ready to start your new adventure as a bed and breakfast owner. Are you considering opening a bed and breakfast? Let me know in the comments. We cover many more aspects of operating a hospitality property in the Guide to Owning and Operating a Hospitality Property Successfully course. Take advantage of the current course special. You can find more information at keystonehpd.com slash course. Okay, you're going to have access to this episode for as long as you'd like. But if you would like to see all the bonuses you would have access to as a member of the Hospitality Property School Group, check out the short video in this episode post show notes. In our next episode, I will talk about designing a bed and breakfast. Well, that's it for today's episode. Until next time, have a fun day. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you sign up for Insider Tips, say hi on social, and join one of our groups. And make sure you get your free copy of the How to Improve Your Hospitality Property Success. You can find all of the links in the show notes.